Welcome back to Weigh In, the Inner Mongolia rider horse industry. Who are they, who buys for them and who manages their interests? Well, Graham Forbes was probably the man to talk to, but he's golfing in Queenstown with Butch. Did you not get a call up, Ruds? No. No, look, it's, it's, it's not really about the golfing, is it, DA? <laughs> you know, I'm all about the golfing and my golfing trips, so they didn't invite me. They didn't? No. Next year. Oh, I guess it's bad timing for you anyway, isn't it? Yeah, well, we've got a pretty big race meet at Tarawa this weekend. I think we're going to talk about that later, aren't we? We sure are. All mm. right. Uh, Graham Forbes is not here, but he's nominated his son, uh, Alex, uh, to sub in and uh, have a chat to us about this. And, of course, you've ridden up there as well. First of all, who are they, this group? Uh, the big boss man is someone who's called Long Ling, uh, known in New Zealand as Mr Wolf. Uh, and, yeah, it's going to be pretty big up there. Sure is. Um, I, I guess the, the first question is, is how did your dad get involved? Because he's, he's obviously the one who's ended up bringing you up there as well. Yeah, well, um, dad was training here at the time and he's good friends with Brent Gillivick. He's been a family friend of ours for years. And uh, Brent Gillivick, Andrew Birch rung Brent Gillivick asking to sell horses up there. And um, Brent was the first person to sell horses to China up there. And um, yeah, just, through Brent, really, Dad got the job, and then the next season I went up with Dad. So it was it was kind of a, a New Zealand thoroughbred marketing initiative, I guess you could say. Yeah, yeah. Okay, um, how many, just out of curiosity, um, how many have gone up there so far? Oh, there's been about 460, I think. 460? Yeah. Wow. So your Dad's in charge of buying for export plus managing the racing interests here, is that right? Yeah. Um, and he's got help with a uh, fellow that's come over. He was our translator in China, and um, he's the manager over here, Simon Poon. Yeah. And I understand this is a, like a, a government-funded group that's responsible for this? Yeah, it is. Um, oh, the government pays for most, and uh, yeah, but the boss man runs it all. So these horses that they're purchasing, like they've purchased six horses from the Radio Run sales and three went to uh, to stay in New Zealand to contest the Derby, which is obviously Mongolian Khan's one of them. The other three went to China on the on the first shipment with, with another 81 horses from New Zealand, which your father, uh, he went around New Zealand trainers looking for horses that probably weren't quite up to, to our mark to purchase, take up there. Is that how it worked? Yeah, that's how it worked, Paul. Um all the nice ones, the ones they basically spend over 100k for stay here, really. Yeah, right. But they'll go up to China after the three-year-old campaign or not? Ah, uh, yeah, definitely. When they retire as a racehorse, they'll go up there and they'll breed from them. Right, right. And they, they don't only um, have gallop races, you have trotting races too. Yeah. yeah um, On back, you ride them though, no sulkies. No sulkies. Yeah. They're going to bring in sulkies when the new racehorse comes into play, but... Uh, Ride them at the moment. And Pretty fun. You were saying uh, on the way up here that you said the, the prize money there, um, when they were first, second and third, they get put on a podium. The trainer and the jockey, they get put on first, second and third and they get handed an envelope with cash in it. Thank you. That's, <laughs> that's how they get their prize money. It's a bit like the Greyhounds. Tax free. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it is. Yeah, beautiful. Forbes, you said it was great. <laughs> Loved it. <laughs> so so, so th this group, do they, they obviously have a plan. They have a, a, a grand plan of, of, of achieving an ultimate goal, what is that goal? Well, I mean, what do, what do they want to achieve? Oh, look, you wouldn't know. He's a freakish businessman. He just wants to be best, the best, really. That's it. Well, when they do it, those Asians, they yes. do it properly, don't do it they? Properly. Like, uh, it's only going to get bigger and bigger, you think, don't you? Exactly. I mean, just, you know, 460 horses at the moment, double that, nearly a 1,000, and it's going to be a, a little micro-industry up there, isn't it? No wagering, though, Alex, is that right? Not allowed to punt up there, are they, at the moment? There'd be a fairly uh, big change if it can come in. No, not at this stage. When we were up there, we got told punting will come in within the next five years, but mm. whether that's going to happen or not, you just don't know. Mm. How is your dad going up there? He, obviously, he's training up there. How many horses does he have him work, and whereabouts does he sit on the trainers' premiership, if there is one? Uh, last year, he ended up running second in the trainers' premiership. It's pretty hard to beat the um, leading trotting trainer because he gets all the good <laughs> trotters and... It's impossible to beat them, but um, yeah, he ended up running second. Yep. Dad's got about 28 horses, usually, sometimes more. Right. 
What about the weight scale up there for a jockey? Like, are they similar to our weights, or are you just obviously not if you're riding up there? <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, they they're pretty good. Well, they, they let you ride a couple kilos over, but really, so yeah. it's pretty casual. Pretty casual. Pretty casual. Mm, yeah. At this stage, yeah, it sounds good. Is it very different though up there from a jockey's perspective, or not? Oh uh, no, nah, not really. No, yeah. it's just different style of riding over here. We ride a lot tighter, obviously, but. In the track itself, Alex, is it a you know two thousand um, metre circumference kind of thing, and typical of New Zealand tracks, or are they different in terms of their specifications and scope? Well, it's about an eleven fifty <laughs> metre round track. <laughs> Jeepers, it's like a harness track. Yeah, isn't it? and they have got eight thousand metre races over there. <laughs> you get dizzy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you just count. You, you, do they have a bell that you know when the last round is? No, nah, you just got to count. Oh, you'd have no it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, some of them just jump to the front and just go. Really? They just fly humding along. And the class of jockey is pretty average? Oh, there's a couple good riders over there. Is there? Yeah. You were one of them, obviously. No, I was the, I was average, Paul. Were you? <laughs> same as New Zealand, <laughs> same as when you were riding here. <laughs> so, uh, where did you, did you f finish anywhere in the Premiership? Did you win a Premiership up there? Or? I ended up running second. Right. And did you win a big race? I won about three on the same horse. Uh, it was a line horse, big chestnut fella. Right. Sprint race. Um, yeah, he's pretty good. Are you yeah, going to go back up there? Probably one day. One yeah. day, but not in the immediate future? No, no. Um, it's not really my sort of lifestyle. It's very boring. Can't talk to anyone. Yeah. Gee, it sounds like living at Cambridge, do you? <laughs> <laughs> well, you've just finished at the, the sales, and, and I noticed that you sort of led the last Sabeel in before handing it over to, to Sir Patrick. That must have been a buzz. Yeah, it was a good thrill. Um, probably got a bit more nervous leading that through than any time I was riding in the races. Um, Even for me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Sir Patrick was very good to me at the sales. I really enjoyed it. Excellent. All right. Well, thanks very much for, for coming in and, uh, and uh, we'll be watching, obviously, Mongolian calm with a lot of interest and uh, we wish your father uh, well down at Queenstown and, and future endeavours in, in, in China. Thanks for coming All in. Right. Thank you. Alex Forbes with us here on Way In. We're back with more right after this. Up next on Way In, the panel dissect the rest of the card from Tarapa and highlight some impressive midweek winners.